I just tested the batteries, but it's gone. I don't know. So yeah, uh, it's on now, but I'm not sure how soon it'll be gone again. But this is uh, just a backup. <laughs> so thank you, Jerry, for the beautiful music. <laughs> because of the harmonica, it, it sounds really good. Yeah, I noticed that the harmonica, which you a little bit down, harmonica and guitar goes together. So good morning again, happy Sabbath to you. And I think I first time I saw you, Anthony, and your name is Barbara, right? Yeah, thank you for coming again. And Lorena, Jerry, and Sylvia, and the rest of you. So uh, still the Omicron variant is uh, rampant, and I've been to a Korean camp meeting uh, last week, PUC, and I've heard many of those uh, got contracted with COVID. I tested a bunch of um, uh, NAAT tests, so I, I, I'm okay so far, so. But I just recommend um, you to uh, put your mask on if you uh, feel free to do that. And uh, another thing is that uh, monkey virus, monkey pox virus is still uh, going on. And I searched for uh, this, another pandemic here in the United States, total cases about uh, over 7,000 cases. Uh, New, York, New York State is the most high number around 1,700 cases, and followed by uh, California, 826 cases. Do you believe that uh, the monkeypox virus is here in Sonoma County? What do you think? Yes, it is, sadly. Uh, 17 cases were reported, so maybe uh, the COVID uh, pandemic is just nothing compared to the next pandemic, <laughs> uh, whatever that'll be. But uh, title is going beyond. Satan's strategy, uh, his tactic is to focus, for us to focus on those earthly things and pandemics and the disasters and war and those things. But we have to be very careful. This is a spiritual battle at the end, we have to focus on our God. And going beyond is the, the theme. It's gone now. It's the theme that so we, we can trust <laughs> the Barry Tester. Uh, it's the theme that we, we had a Korean camp meeting during uh, last, last week. This is an interesting story, the Amazon. I think Amazon was found, founded in uh, 1994, if I remember correctly. And at the moment, uh, 1996, I started my uh, MDA program at Andrews University Theological Seminary. And a friend of mine showed me that uh, you should go to this website and purchase books. Sometimes the theological textbooks, they are not cheap. So it's compared to the, the bookstore at Andrews, and I just love to uh, uh, use this uh, online store. But guess what? Because of this uh, Amazon mega online bookstore, it just eats up everything. There's no more borders nearby. No more Barnes and Nobles. But interestingly enough, Amazon, after destroying all the offline bookstores, they opened their own offline bookstore. Does it make sense to you? So time is changing. And this is a recent article from Reuters. Amazon to shut its bookstores and other shops as its grocery chain expands. We know that uh, uh, Amazon purchased the uh, Whole Food uh, that uh, store, so they are just expanding and decided to shut again, shut, shut down uh, this offline bookstore. 
So what I'm saying is it's changing so rapidly uh, based on the circumstances and uh, their surroundings and, and so on. So I thought about our spirituality, our religious um, endeavor. Is it something, are we following the world or the world is following us? Which one is which? I feel like uh, we are following the world and we, we have to be a leader of this world and we just ended up a following, follower, ended up with a followers like this. I thought about it and how can we upgrade our belief system, our religious, spiritual relationships between us and God. And is there any area that I can do some, uh, uh, I can improve some area? So First Chronicles and chapter 4 and verse 10, just uh, Jerry read, it's a story of uh, Jabez, right? And when you, when you were in the uh, Bible read-through read uh, program, a whole year, starting January 1st, Genesis 1, and all the way through uh, uh, Revelation uh, 21, 22. And this is a huge obstacles we, we may encounter because who loves the uh, lineage of our uh, ancestry? Who loves uh, the family, family tree? It's Sometimes it's really hard to uh, get through it because it's uh, repeating the same thing. Almost like when you turn your uh, Bible uh, Chronicles, and this is uh, Noah's son, and Adam, and Seth, Enoch, and Canaan, Mahalalel, and Jared, and Enoch, and Muthusalel, Lamech, and all the way, it's a list of all the names. All the way up to uh, the, this chapter and this verse, in chapter 4 and verse 10, out of sudden, out of nowhere, there is a name, Jabez, and there is a story. It says, uh, Jabez cried out to the, to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. By the way, the Jabez name, the meaning of the Jabez is a pain. And God granted his request. So about uh, maybe uh, 15 years ago, there's a little booklet called the, J Pray the Prayer of Jabez, and it was so popular at that moment. But the word here, the, the phrase here, enlarge my territory. That just inscribed my heart. Wow, enlarge my territory. Sometimes we we feel we feel we are so uh, childish or childlike when we are praying for myself, not for others, but just for myself. Lord, do this and do that, and please protect me and my family. Da 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 da. And but according to this, something wrong. Oh, sorry, I have no eyes at the back of my head. <laughs> sorry about that. Me too. Oh, you do? <laughs> okay. So, but God granted this prayer. You should pray for yourself and for your family. Nothing wrong with that. And in, in addition to that, uh, you may pray for others, right? <laughs> and the second item is enlarge my territory. Wow. There's really helps to understand how, where we should go. Enlarge my territory. Think about enlarge my territory. Someone in the Bible who lives, who lived on earth, but lives in heaven. It's an enlarge my territory. He's living, he's conducting, he's doing something miraculously or going beyond and he enjoyed the life of heaven while they are on earth. 
I thought about that, and the story of J uh, Joseph. Joseph is one of those. You remember Joseph, right? Story of hatred. Story of uh, temptation. Story of ordeal, difficult times. Even he experienced the bottom of their uh, his life, the bottom of his life, uh, in the, uh, uh, the in prison. And all of a sudden, he met all the the uh, separated brothers and father, and now he became the prime minister next to the the pharaoh. Guess what? If I put in his shoes, and who knows, maybe I, I, I may I enjoy all uh, despair and frustration every day, but Joseph was different because based upon his pain and his ordeal, difficult times, and still he's pro prosperous in God's view. Let me ask you a question in, um, so to speak, the chapter of faith, the Hebrews chapter 11. What kind of statement, what kind of a description the Hebrew writers regarding Joseph? What did, what did he write for Joseph? That's a Hebrew uh, 11, 22. He says, by faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. Wow. There's nothing earthly thing here. Nothing temptation, nothing prime minister, nothing. But when... When he's, when he's about to die, he talked about, hey, my friends, my, uh, my family, please remember we should go out, out of Egypt, Exodus. And please remember my bone, my bones, and you should take out my bones. So still, his mind is in, in heaven. It's all, all the awfully things, his, uh, uh, his success, and his achievement is just nothing. It's just nada, zero. But only thing uh, he mentioned uh, through the Hebrew Hebrews writers is that he's still focusing on the goal. Goal is heaven, our eternal life. Another figure that I uh, wanted to mention is Naaman, Second Kings, five, one through nineteen. I love this, this story because he's a great uh, commander of the army, the Israelites' enemy, but he has a limitation. He's a leprosy. He's a leper. So according to uh, the little girl in the, in the house, and she recommended this uh, master. I wish you could go to uh, my country and to see my prophet, Elijah. I'm sorry, Elisha. And you may be healed like this. So he did. Second Kings 5.15. Now we understand that Naaman, Naaman uh, confessed that there's only one God. That's our God. And the other, the rest of small gods, this is nothing. Then Naaman and his attendants went back to the man of God, and he stood before him. And look at this. Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. And he just wanted to accept uh, his gift. So this is the story that uh, his confession, there, there's only one God. Israeli God is the uh, real God. And the other one is all fake. <laughs> now my computer battery is running out. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. But our verse, our verse 17, this is a very interesting expression right here. If you will not, said Naaman, please let me, they didn't accept the gift, right? And please let me, your servants, be given as much earth as a pair of mules and can carry. For your servant will never, never again make burnt offerings and sacrifice to other gods but the Lord. Interesting. He wanted the soil. He wanted uh, the earth. The soil in his country, he can get it, but specifically he wants this. Well, I'm an immigrant from uh, Korea, and some, I don't know if this is real or not, but some immigrants, they wanted to gather their own soil the homeland and brought into America. I don't think that that's a good idea when you uh, go through the customs, right? <laughs> you have to rec uh, declare. <laughs> but uh, that means, okay, my soul, my heart reside in this soul, my home country. Even if I'm an immigrant, but I still remember that this is my soul, my home country, my root, kind of my root. The same thing, uh, Naaman is declaring that I need the soil because from now on, I need my God. I have a decision right here. I made up my mind right here to serve you only. And as a sign, as a, a sample, as an example, I need uh, this soil so that I can worship only you, my God. That's the thing. And next verse is very interesting. It says, uh, eight, verse 18, But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Rimon to bow down, and he is leaning on my arm, and I have to bow there also. When I bow down the temple of Rimon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. So what is this? He has a special circumstances and special uh, situation because when his boss is going to worship the idol and he has to to support him and naturally he has to lean, uh, lean down bow down so that's one of the concerns he had previous uh, verse, verses, he declared that there is only one God. I only worship you. And now he has a different uh, situation. But when he goes back to his hometown, he has to encounter this terrible, difficult time. What should I do? What was the uh, Elisha's answer? Next verse. You wrote the dynamite. Because he said, in English word, uh, go in peace. Maybe in a Hebrew word, I didn't check, but shalom, and go with shalom, like Elisha said. I'm not promoting that uh, idol worship is a good thing, but this uh, special case, we have to uh, exercise some uh, flexibility. Well, golden rule is that be very strict to yourself, but be generous to others. Because we don't know their backgrounds, their family, their education, their experience, what she or he may go through. But it is so easy to uh, uh, 
criticize something, right, and judge others. But no, we should never do that. Even if you don't like their style, their attitude, but still, be strict on yourself, but be generous to others. That exactly uh, explains the scene like this. On your right, looks like uh, the knife is pointing somebody who got scared like this. Right? But on your left, that's the whole picture. One is running away from uh, the life-threatening uh, situation like this. But media, we have uh, our own screen, our frame, and saw that. It's kind of a confirmation bias. We like to listen what we want to listen only. Even if there is uh, some, uh, something uh, real happened, and we don't accept it because we don't like it. We don't like to accept that. So there's a confirmation bias. And if you believe that uh, this is right and I'm right, and no matter what has happened, and no matter what circumstances, we do not give up our biased opinion because we thought we are always right. Going back to the, uh, the, the ground, the soil, and it's the same word, the Adama. The person named Adam comes from Adama. It's uh, ground, land, dirt, soil, those things. The same word was described, uh, the name of the story described uh, um, going back to Genesis 3.19. It says, by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you're taken for dust you are, to, to dust you will return. The same word, Adam, Adama. So when uh, Naaman uh, confessed his faith toward God, the same word, okay, Lord, I'm going to remember this soil, this dust, and finally I'm going back to this dust. And no matter what will happen to my life, and I will follow you, Lord. That's uh, Naaman's decision and his uh, uh, attitude and orientation toward uh, the, the world. And still others may uh, take out this single verse out of context and, hey, look at this, we can worship idols. Our ultimate model of life is Jesus, as you know, our Savior. Jesus is the, the man who, going, who went beyond. The title, Going Beyond, he went beyond. He just enlarged his territory. Can you understand how come God became human and died to save us? This is kind of a ridiculous, and this is beyond our imagination, unbelievable. And Jesus, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Can you imagine that? How can, is there any other small letter God to die to save us? No. Well, such God is non-existent, right? But our God himself came down to this earth, became human form, and died for us. So we need Jesus. We should follow Jesus every step. And he's a true person who exercised, who uh, uh, gave us the example how we can live going beyond, how we can extend our territory, enlarge our territory. There's a secret. 
I love uh, this uh, desire, uh, desire of Ages, the comments, and I love this, and I read uh, uh, many multiple times here. The fountain of the heart must be purified before the streams can become pure. That's why there is a stream, and the water is dirty. How can you uh, cleanse this dirty water to clean water? Unless you cleanse the fountain, the origin of the water, still the, the stream will be uh, dirty. So this is talking about this. He who is trying to reach heaven by his own works in keeping the law in attempting an impossibility. There is no safety for one who has merely a legal religion, a form of godliness. And focused on next sentence. The Christian's life is not a modification or improvement of the old, but what? But a transformation of nature. So our life is not just simple modification. Okay, I want to fix this. Okay, I need to uh, improve my uh, roof. Modification and improvement. No, it's a transformation. Transformation. Totally different state. From the caterpillar and cocoon and butterfly. Can you see those two? Caterpillar and butterfly? all different. That is transformation. Not simply I fix this. Oh Lord I have uh, this habit so please forgive me. Next time I won't do this anymore. No. We are going to change inside out. Transformation. There is a death to self and sin. How do we get the transformation? This is the answer. There is a death to self and sin, and new life altogether. This change can be brought about only by the effectual working of the Holy Spirit. So we can do that, but only Holy Spirit can do this, and Holy Spirit can transform us. I found a very interesting story, the, the story between the chimps and the human. Do you believe that uh, Chimpanzee can be a man. What do you think? If the chimpanzee, chimpanzee is trying hard to be a man, is it possible? Well, if the chimpanzee is following this man and caught up with him, can it be a man? No. There is an experiment. In 1931, June 26, a psychologist, last name is Kellogg, he adopted a chimp. It is called the ape and the child. And his own son, his name is Donald. And this chimpanzee's name is Agua. Gua was about uh, seven months old, and his own son was about uh, ten months old. So the experiment is that uh, to watch out, to uh, to see while they are still young and raising up them together, and kind of chimpanzee can be a man, something like that. So he tried to treat this chimpanzee as, a, as just just like a little a baby, um, the daughter. The, the chimp was uh, wearing uh, pampas <laughs> diaper uh, eat on a, the dining table uh, with spoon and napkins and the mother or father gives her um, a good night sleep kiss yeah good night kiss <laughs> but story goes the experiment ended in about uh, nine months. Because the, the, it is definite they can find the chimp can be a man, a woman. It is definite. Well, uh, the chimp, they can mimic something, but still the intellectual power 
it, it is almost impossible. That's what uh, God said, uh, uh, let me, uh, I mean, Jeremiah 13, 23. Can an Ethiopian change his skin or leopard its spots? Neither can you do good who are accustomed to doing evil like this. So interesting, the Ethiopian, uh, the Ethiopians can change the skin. <coughs> Can I call leopard without a spot leopard? There's a panther, <laughs> the black panther. But it's impossible. He it says impossible. No, it's impossible. But I can challenge you just one thing. It's possible. Only one thing. Only one condition. What should it be? If our God recreate this a leopard with a spot, it can be possible, right? If our God can recreate Ethiopian man with a light skin, it's possible. It is not impossible. It is not possible for us, but it's possible to God. Everything is possible, right? So this is my conclusion. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Just one simple sentence. Deny myself every day and take up my cross and follow Jesus. All we can do is to receive the Holy Spirit, we can, we can be dead in front of God and our dead body. God can recreate, recreate us and we are going to be a different human being. So this is not a modification or alteration, improvement, but this is going to be a transformation from God. So Please follow Jesus and look upon his cross, what he has done. And this is our decision today, your decision today. Lord, please accept me as we are, as I am. But I just wanted to give my heart to you and recreate my soul and my heart so that we can enlarge our territory, extend our territory and there we are living in a different level while we are living on earth we can leave heaven still this possible